Starfield has become the new Crisis 3 but unfortunately not because it has the most awesome graphics of all the games present on Steam but because it is poorly optimized. It is quite obvious from the various benchmarks that no matter how powerful the GPU is, Starfield will make it struggle to push the performance beyond 60 FPS. Even the RTX 4070 which is a 1440p gaming killer can't sustain 60 FPS on native 1080p ultra settings. So imagine how things will go when you try to play this game on a mid-range or a budget graphics card like the RTX 4060 or RX 7600. Easily put, you can't have playable frame rates unless you use AMD's FSR, but that reduces the graphics quality tremendously. Now, this has put Intel Arc GPUs in big trouble, and this is not only because of how badly the game is optimized, but also because Intel is still figuring out how it can improve its drivers to make sure that users can get at least 30 plus FPS consistently. Unfortunately, the A770 with its initial drivers had a lot of problems and couldn't even catch up to 30 FPS on 1080p low settings. Intel did release drivers three times after the game was launched, but many problems still persist. Many users have complained about the stability and rendering of objects, and some have even reported that the game wouldn't even launch or crash mid-game. While most of the crucial problems have been fixed, there are an equal number of issues that are still present. Well, many of them are definitely due to the drivers, but I can assure you that even AMD GPUs are suffering from such issues. I will talk about it later, but I just wanted to share how the Starfield publisher Bethesda responded to an ARC GPU user who reported about the game issues. In the email, the publisher customer support said, I see that you have an Intel ARC A770 graphics card. This does not meet the minimum requirements of an AMD Radeon RX 5700 or Nvidia GeForce 1070 Ti. Since you do not meet the minimum system requirements for running this game, the troubleshooting steps we can provide are limited, as some troubleshooting steps could potentially cause damage to your system. Essentially, Bethesda thinks that the ARC A770 is weaker than the RX 5700 and the GTX 1070 Ti, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Both the GPUs are older than the A770 and we have seen that A770 is quite comparable even to the latest gen RX 7600 and the RTX 4060. So either the customer support who responded to this issue is totally ignorant of PC hardware or it is really what Bethesda thinks about Intel Arc GPUs. Now there are still some games where Intel Arc GPUs cannot compete with its competitors, but they are mostly older titles and Intel has improved on many of them with frequent driver updates. However, Starfield is one of the rare games that doesn't seem to be getting rid of bugs. This is quite evident from how the game works on AMD GPUs. A Reddit user recently posted how in some instances the game wouldn't even render a star on AMD GPU. And looking at some comments, it does seem like a common issue among a lot of gamers owning an RX 6000 or 7000 GPU. Here the problem occurs when you are on the day side of a moon where even though you can see the lighting effects on the ground, the actual star is missing. This was captured on the RX 7900. XT, which is definitely a high-end GPU. Upon swapping this card with the RTX 3070 Ti, the star appears. This problem has been replicated in various instances, which proves that it is indeed the problem with AMD GPUs, which is ironic considering that AMD is the one who sponsored Starfield and made it FSR exclusive. So despite making it an extremely huge launch, AMD still isn't getting any advantages over Nvidia, and Intel is definitely non-existent in the competition. I can only think of what would happen if more games like Starfield get launched before the launch of Intel Battle Mage. Intel Battle Mage's flagship card is supposedly going to compete with the RTX 4070 Ti, which although sufficient for almost any game, won't be able to compete with the higher-end AMD and Nvidia cards. Still, at the end of the day, I believe that it's more of the publisher's fault rather than the GPU manufacturers. Making the game maps huge, adding complex assets, and deploying ray tracing without any optimization is making things worse and worse for modern-day GPUs. The only way GPU manufacturers can catch up with the insane requirements is by using upscaling methods, which are limited in the case of Nvidia DLSS. And considering the compatibility of GPUs with different DLSS versions, the chances of users being able to use DLSS get even slimmer. On the other hand, AMD has great FSR support for several GPU generations, but when AMD prohibits the integration of any other competitive upscaling methods, it is surely problematic for many gamers who own an Nvidia or Intel GPU. This boils down to the point that no matter how great the upscaling methods work to improve the performance, developers still need to focus more on the native resolution. If you agree with this, then hit the like button and comment down below if you think otherwise. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new here, turn on the notification bell to never miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one.